as farmers of sweet nectar, sophisticated architects, and members of a unique hierarchy alongside ants. The honeybee is an iconic insect, and at the pinnacle of honeybee colonies is the queen, who devotes her whole life to egg laying and reproducing. On average, queen bees lay one or two eggs per minute, 1,000 to 2,000 per day, and a whopping 2 million eggs over a lifetime. Meanwhile, it's up to the worker bees to find food, build and clean the hive, and guard their home. But here's a fun fact for you. Queen bees aren't born, they're made. Worker bees and queen bees are both female, born as equally sized larvae from equally sized eggs, and aside from their physical appearance, are genetically indistinguishable, like identical twin sisters. So how on earth is a queen bee created then? When the existing queen dies, or when the queen leaves the colony after mating to start a new one, the existing colony needs a new queen. The worker bees then have to choose from the many eggs laid by the previous queen to decide who will become the new queen. This is where the famous royal jelly comes into play. Nurse bees feed all the newly hatched larvae from the selected eggs with royal jelly, which they secrete from hypopharyngeal glands on their heads, is so nutritious that larvae fed royal jelly grow up to 1,000 times larger in their first five days. In human terms, that's like a newborn baby gaining three tons in five days. Initially, the nurse bees feed all the larvae royal jelly, but after about 72 hours, something funny happens. The nurse bees select a few larvae, enlarge the room they're in, and feed them nothing but royal jelly until the end of their larval stage. These larvae are the hive's queen candidates. The rest of the larvae are gradually fed less royal jelly and introduced to bee bread, a mixture of pollen and honey. It's this difference that causes some larvae to become queens, while the others grow into worker bees. Despite having almost no genetic differences, royal jelly alone causes differences in size, reproductive capacity, and lifespan, which is 50 times longer than those of worker bees. As you can see, in bee society, status is determined by food. But despite raising multiple larvae to become queens, the truth is that the colony only needs one. That's why the first queen that reaches maturity will sting her fellow unborn princesses to death. Yeah, pretty ruthless, huh? And if two queen bees are born born at the same time, they will fight wing and stinger until only one remains standing. Now, hold on, we forgot to ask an important question earlier, didn't we? On what basis do the nurse bees select the larvae to be raised as potential queens? And what is it about royal jelly that grants such stellar status to its consumers? For a long time, scientists thought that because worker bees and queen bees have little genetic difference, larvae were chosen to become queens at random. But in 2011, Dr. Jiang Kun Li of the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences discovered that there were significant genetic differences between those who would become workers and those chosen to become queens. In his experiments, larvae that were destined to become queens contained significantly more proteins in their mitochondria, which are necessary for metabolism, cell growth, and cell division than larvae which were destined to become workers. The nurse bees that would raise the larva recognized who would grow up as royalty and fed them the royal jelly. But even with these innate differences, no bee can grow into a queen without royal jelly's physical support. That same year, a paper was published in Nature that would reveal more royal jelly secrets. Japanese professor Masaki Kamakura conducted an experiment in which he heated royal jelly to 40 degrees Celsius, then fed it to bee larva. The results were, what? No matter how much you feed them, they don't develop into queens. He discovered that heating the jelly to 40 degrees Celsius destroys a protein called royal lactin, a core component of royal jelly. He hypothesized that this was the secret ingredient that turned larvae into queens. And further experiments showed that feeding larvae only royal lactin, extracted from royal jelly, still allowed them to develop into queens. He took it a step further and tried feeding royal lactin to fruit flies too. 
And to his surprise, even the fruit flies that were fed royal lactin grew much larger, had bulging bellies, and laid twice as many eggs, very similar to queen bees. Royal lactin was later shown to activate a receptor that promotes cell growth and increases cell lifespan in insects, and subsequent studies have shown that royal lactin, alongside other substances in royal jelly, regulate DNA expression and hormones in the bodies of bee larvae. It seemed like royal jelly had solidified itself as a key component of queening until 2017, when a groundbreaking study was published that completely changed the way we think about how queen bees are made. Dr. Chen Shi, a professor at Nanjing University in China, argued that queen bees don't become queen bees because they eat only royal jelly, but because they don't eat pollen and nectar. Now, rewinding back to the beginning of our story, remember how we talked about the gradual reduction in the amount of royal jelly for unchosen larvae and the transition to feeding them pollen and honey. This pollen and honey is the crux that prevents these larvae from developing into queens. Pollen and nectar contain plant myRNAs, and it's these myRNAs that get into the cells of bee larvae and suppress the expression of proteins involved in ovarian growth. In other words, bees don't become queens because they're fed something good. They become queens because they aren't fed something bad. But is becoming a queen necessarily a good thing? If you think about it, you're either an ultra hardworking worker bee or a queen whose sole purpose is to be an egg-laying machine. It's a bit of a dilemma, really. But regardless, it's fascinating to think about the ecology of a bee whose identity is determined by the food it's given. Science is a window to the world, and this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.